All right, so I decided to make a quick video. Um, I wasn't at first, but uh, we're working on the Suzuki LT230E uh, 1987 or 88. I forget exactly what year this is, either 87 or 88. But anyway, uh, it hasn't run for a while. We started it up. Runs was kind of running rough. Uh, it would run for a while and kind of shut off. Um, kind of messed around with the carburetor a little bit, and then we checked for spark, and the spark is intermittent. Uh, pretty much not there 90% of the time. Uh, then every once in a while you'll get a spark, and, and you'll get it to, to catch and turn over uh, and, and start. But anyway, i uh, give you a quick rundown of what we did so far. Basically, we pulled out our plug here, um, did just check the spark plug, basically. You can see I cleaned up here a little bit, make sure we're getting a good ground. Uh, put the spark plug against here, turned it over, and uh, weren't getting any spark. So I had a spare coil, this guy right here. So if you're going to try this, basically you got to get your front plastic off. got to get this guy off, and you're going to have your coil here. You're going to have two wires on the right-hand side, the way we're looking at it. you got a white with a blue tracer on it. On the left, you got a black wire uh, with a white tracer. So I replaced that temporarily. That didn't do anything. Uh, so we're going to keep digging. All right, so at this point, uh, we still don't have spark. So I'm actually going to start going through the sequence that's in the original service manual. Uh, we're pretty much going to start at point A and work our way through and start checking um, resistance values and that kind of thing to see if we can narrow this down. Um, normally when you're doing this, you know, it's the quickest thing to do is try a new spark plug. If you have a spare coil, try a different coil, that kind of thing. Uh, but if you don't find your no spark problem quickly, um, at that point you have to just start somewhere and kind of start working your way through. So I am going to get out the original service manual, and we'll, we'll start going through things. All right, so here's one of the original service manuals we're going to be using. Um, I've had this for years. You can usually find them on eBay. These are the actual manuals that the dealership would have used uh, back in the day. Uh, if you have, a, like, a climber aftermarket-type uh, book, that's probably going to show you the values and stuff you need as well. Uh, but I find that these... Um, usually have the best information like the climbers and stuff sometimes they kind of word things a little more towards the um the hobbyist which is kind of nice a lot of things are in layman's terms um but again i find these a lot more useful when you're looking for the proper values to check things so we're going to go to section five which is the electrical system That's on the charging system. Uh, we're not so much worried about that right now. We're looking for the ignition system. There's a quick look at that for anybody that might want to reference this. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. If you want to screenshot this or something. All right, so anyway, this is where we're going to start. All right, so this is where we're starting. Uh, we're going to work with the magneto coil. Uh, we got to take the seat off. We're going to disconnect it. And this is showing us our values that we're going to be looking for. Um, they do mention, let's see if this is where I read it or not. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's something else. But basically, they mention they, they want you to use... The Suzuki electric tester, which I don't think you could find one of those if you want to, but any good ohm meter um, is going to get you pretty close. So there's a picture. And they're showing you where we're going to take these measurements from. But anyhow, this is where we're going to start. So I'm going to get set up over on the quad, and uh, we'll, we'll check some readings. All right, so to get the access that we need, we're going to take the front plastic off. I'm uh, not going to spend a lot of time in this, but I'll show you the points that you have to unbolt real quick or unscrew. Uh, you're going to have two here underneath your seat, which is going to have this bracket on it and a couple bolts that hold that in place. Um, you're going to have to undo just the outer screw on this area here. Same thing on this side, just the one. 
Then up front here, you're going to have to remove your grill. Uh, you're going to have uh, two bolts that hold it in here, and then two up top underneath the handlebars, one there and one there. Uh, once you get those off, you'll be able to remove the grill. Um, there's a couple rubber grommets here with like two pins that kind of set in there. They just That just pulls out. That's these guys here. So it comes out pretty easily, but you have to tug on it a little bit. Once you get that grill off, you'll have a bolt here and a bolt here. And that should pretty much free everything up on the front plastic. All right, next we're going to get this gas tank off. Uh, it's actually not that difficult to do, really. Uh, first things first, shut your gas off. Make sure you're in the off position. It's going to look like that. You got your hose going down to your carburetor. Just wiggle that guy off. Just let it hang there. All right, once you got that done, you have a bolt on this side. And you have a bolt on this side. Mine happen to be different. Somebody put a Allen key style in here at one time. So anyway, I'm going to remove those two. And uh, once we get those two off, uh, this tank will lift right out. All right, so once you got your bolts out, uh, this should lift right out. Let's grab the back of the tank. It'll lift right up. Then you'll be able to pull that right off. Um, hard to do with one hand, so I'm going to set the uh, camera down. All right, so starting in our book, we're going to start with the pulser coil. And that's going to be a blue wire with a yellow tracer, BL slash Y. And the other wire is going to be green with a white tracer. Um, and for anybody that's a beginner, I'll use this wire as an example. All right, you can see the yellow stripe on that. But you can see the rest of the wire is black. So that's considered black with a yellow tracer. Uh, this, usually the smaller stripe is considered a tracer. So again, we're looking for blue and yellow and green and white. And that's going to be this guy here. It's going to be a little hard to see because this quad is uh, over 30 years old. But this bottom wire right here is blue with a yellow tracer. And this top one right here is green with a white tracer. Again, kind of hard to see. You really want to verify it. You could try to pull this jacket back a little bit and you can get to some clean wire, but I know that's it. Coming out the other side is just blue and green, just as a reference. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this disconnected and we'll check our, our values on that. Uh, they're saying it should be about 120 plus or minus 20%. Um, any meter is going to range. Uh, you can have three different meters and your readings are probably all going to be a little bit different. But uh, basically you want it to be within 20% of that reading. Alright, so set your meter to ohms. Uh, that's that sign right there. You don't need a real expensive meter to do this. Um, if you don't own one and you can't borrow one and you have a harbor freight or something like that nearby, you can get a cheap digital meter uh, probably for under 30 bucks that'll do what you need it to do all right so once you're set on ohms uh, you should see your ohm sign on your meter um, not going to get too deep into um, electrical values and stuff but uh, you can measure ohms you can measure mega ohms you can measure kilo ohms uh, for this particular reading the book should state this one here is really not stating anything, so I'm assuming it's by the value that they're showing me there. It's just ohms, which we're set on. Um, but you should have like some type of range button on your meter. You can see that says K ohms for kilo ohms. Keep hitting it, and it should. Uh, there's M for mega ohms. But anyhow, this one here, just make sure you're on uh, just ohms, and we're looking for a value of around 120. Uh, plus or minus 20 percent. All right, so again, make sure you're on the right colors here. Obviously, you don't want to be on this side here. You want to be on the side that goes down to your uh, magneto down here. So basically, put your probes, one on this side and one on the other,
so. All right, so we're going across that now. I'll bring the meter over so I don't have to move the camera. Uh, we got about 113.4, so we're definitely within that 120 uh, plus or minus 20%. So, so far that checks out. All right, so next we're going to do our primary coil, and that's going to be brown and pink. And it's going to be right next to this guy here. You can see your brown and pink. This side here looks pink and pink to me, but uh, not sure if that's just from fading or not. But we're going to be checking this side of it. All right, so once you get this separated, just as pulls apart, we're going to go across those two terminals right there. All right, I just had to readjust here. All right, so I'm going across those two, and I'm actually getting no reading on my meter. Um, so this could be our problem. Uh, I'm kind of assuming at this point that it is um, because I'm getting absolutely nothing. So in other words, if I go ahead and let me get back on there just to show you real quick. Again, no reading, just says OL. Oh, well. And I'm going across those. So if I take these leads off, it makes no difference. And if I hold these two leads together, you'll see that the meter jumps up. So so we definitely got something going on there. Um, kind of makes sense that that, that might be our problem. Um, All right, so I'm over at a spare motor that I happen to have for a LT230E on uh, one of our project quads. Um, chances are you don't have an extra motor sitting around, uh, but I do, so I'm going to take advantage of that. There's our wires coming out of our magneto. And obviously got the same fittings that I was just showing you. So I am going to go across these two on this one, and uh, I know this motor was running, so I'm assuming I'm going to get the proper reading on this. Uh, basically, this is just going to help me prove, uh, even though I already know, uh, the other one's definitely uh, no good. All right, so again, for the primary coil, um, across our brown and our pink, we're looking for about 200 ohms, uh, again, plus or minus 20%. All right, so I'm across my two points here. You can see I just got that tucked underneath the rubber. Um, so there's our reading, I'm getting like uh, 179.5. So again, that's a good reading. They want somewhere around 200 plus or minus 20%. So that puts us right in the ballpark. So that just kind of confirms uh, that we have a uh, back coil on the other one. So now I'm going to decide if I'm going to take the one off of this motor and swap it out. I really don't want to do that because uh, the other uh, project quad, obviously, we want to get done. And uh, I hate stealing parts off of one and putting it on the other. be different if it was a parts bike, but it's not. So anyway, I'm going to make that decision. I have a feeling I'm going to look for a, a good one on eBay and uh, just go that path, but I'll make that decision soon. All right, so for the sake of making this a, a complete video, even though I found my problem, I'm going to continue on through the book for anybody that's trying to figure out a no-spark issue uh, just in case you have a different issue. So we're going to move on to the ignition coil. Uh, this is just basically saying if you're not using a Suzuki tester, your readings might be a little bit different. Uh, not extremely important um, because we're just looking for a range. Uh, primary side, we're looking for 0 0.1 to 1.0 ohms. Uh, secondary, we're looking for 10 to 25,000 ohms. Uh, that's what the K is there for. That's uh, 1,000 ohms. So 1K is 1,000 ohms. 10 would be 10,000. 25 would be 25,000. Um, so anyway, I'll show you how to do that once we switch to check the uh, kilo ohms. So, but we'll start out with the primary. Uh, I got my coil disconnected from the frame. It was up in here. Um, you could leave it in there if you wanted to. I just got it down here for ease. Um, and you're going to have two wires on the top of this. Just uh, disconnect those. Make sure you remember what colors on what side. That's these guys here. 
All right, so again, get your coil uh, disconnected from the frame. That's where it was located. I just screwed my screw back in so I don't lose it. So this is just kind of flopping here. And that's your secondary side. That's where your spark plug goes. That's just laying there for now. So we're going to go across these two terminals. And that we are looking for 0 0.1 to 1.0. So let's see what we got there. I might have to go get my tripod to do this. I'll give it a whirl. See if I can do this one-handed. Had it. Bear with me a second. All right. So we're getting like 0 0.3. So we're good there. Again you know we're between that 0 0.1 and 1.0 so now we're going to check the secondary side um, so we got to get our meter down in there and uh, that we're going to have to set up uh, on kilo ohms so we're going to change it until we see k ohms and then we're going to go ahead and check that all right so i ended up draping my coil down here so i can get my meter leads on there a little easier uh, so we got one end inside the spark plug cap, and of course we got our other end here. We're set on kilo ohms, k ohms. So I'll go across one side of the coil. Again, other sides in the spark plug end, and we're getting about 15.2, so about 15,000 ohms. We'll go to the other side here. It shouldn't really make any difference should get the same reading so that's one side and that's the other side so anyway this recap spark plug end uh, and you can pretty much go to either side here and your reading should be about the same so anyway we're showing about 15,000 go back to our book here and our secondary, they're saying somewhere is between 10 and 25,000. So we know that this guy's good. All right, so next we're going to check the uh, rectifier that's up here in the front underneath the headlight. It's this guy here with the fins. So if you look over here, you got your wiring harness. So we're going to disconnect this guy and this guy here alright so here's the section on the uh, rectifier if you want to screenshot that that's the chart we're going to be using so basically again you got three yellows and a red and then you got your uh, black with the white tracer so the way you're going to read this chart is you're going to start here with the yellow so if you follow the yellow across and bring the red down, um, it's supposed to read between 2 and 5. Again, K ohms. Uh, again, the next yellow, 2 to 5. Next yellow, 2 to 5. And then from the black and white to the red, uh, we should be reading uh, between 5 and 20. So I'll say this. Um, th these numbers aren't really going to come out right uh, mostly because um, when they keep referencing in here about using the uh, Suzuki pocket tester, you know, uh, people will say, oh, it doesn't matter, you can use any meter. Uh, it's not necessarily true. Uh, when Suzuki engineers made that meter, uh, they made it specifically to check these values. Um, yeah, continuity is continuity. You know, if you have a, you know, if you had a little you know, resistor you got from the electronic store and it was a, you know, 10 ohm resistor, any meter is going to read 10 ohms. Uh, but when it comes to doing these checks like on the rectifier and also the CDI unit, um, it does make a difference. So our digital meter uh, is not going to play nice at all. Uh, in fact, we probably won't get any readings on that if I were to try it. Uh, so we're going to use our analog meter. Uh, obviously this is not the Suzuki meter, uh, but it is an analog meter. So we're going to get some readings 
I got that set on K ohms, and we're going to be able to watch this needle move. Uh, we're still not going to get real accurate numbers uh, that's on this chart, but I'll go through them and I'll just show you that we're actually going to get that needle to move, um, and that's going to give us a pretty rough idea if this is good or not. Uh, again, we're not going to get the real numbers. Uh, eventually, I'd love to get my hands on one of the original Suzuki meters, but um, even though you'll hear people say it doesn't matter, it, it actually does matter. But uh, but we're going to test this the best we can. Uh, if we do any of these and we get no movement on the needle whatsoever, then you got an open circuit, so we know we got an issue. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get set up and, and we'll go ahead and we'll go through those. All right, so... I know you can't see me doing this, I just have the camera set up so you can see the needle on the meter. Um, but I am going across the red, I have my positive lead on the red, and I'm going to go to each of the yellows, and we should see that, uh, that needle move. That's the first yellow, second yellow, and the third yellow. And you can see we're actually kind of going off the charts with it. Uh, but we're getting readings on every one, so that's good. Uh, now we're going to go our negative lead, our black lead. We're going to go to the black and white. That's the single wire that was by itself. Put that in there. All right, so from the black and white, we're going to go to each yellow. And uh, it's it's shown between two and actually it's shown between five and twenty. Again, we're probably not going to see an accurate number. Um, but anyway, let's go through each of the yellows with the black and white. There's the first one, second one, and come on, and the third one. So lastly, we're going to go across the black and white. And the red, and let's see what we get there. And you can see that one there didn't actually pin out all the way. Uh, I'll go across one of the yellows again. Watch the needle. You see how it's pegged out. We're going to go across the red, and it doesn't quite pin out. Again, we're not getting real readings on this meter. This is kind of a cheap analog meter I have anyway, like a $10 meter. So anyway, we're getting readings across every one of them. So uh, I'm already convinced that that rectifier is good. I just kind of want to run through this the best we could uh, with the equipment we have. So anyway, that's the rectifier. Um, so pretty much just uh, make sure that you're getting some kind of reading. Uh, if we were to go across any of those and this needle didn't move at all, then that means something's open. you got an open circuit, and uh, you can start thinking about having a possibility of a bad rectifier. So anyway, that's it for a rectifier for now. And uh, we got one more thing to check. All right, so lastly, we're going to move on to the CDI unit. That's this guy here. Uh, if you follow the wiring harness up through, um, there's the end of our harness. You got a pink and brown, black and yellow, black and white, and then you got your blue and green. So, uh, real quick about CDIs, you know, if Again, if you're a beginner with this stuff um, and you don't know much about CDIs, uh, CDIs are hard to troubleshoot. Uh, usually what most people do is uh, they troubleshoot everything else, kind of like we've been doing. Spark plug, you know, rectifier, uh, stator, and you kind of work your way around. If all that stuff proves out to be good, you can usually assume that it's the CDI. Um, you got to be careful, though. I had that situation before where I troubleshot it down to a CDI. And uh, I ended up having uh, water that got behind uh, one of the wiring harnesses, and there was a nick in the wire, and so some weird stuff happens sometimes. But uh, CDI units pretty much uh, save for last. Uh, they're not cheap. Uh, these old Suzukis, when you find them used, the, you know they're between 100 and 150 bucks. Um, you really can't find them new. Um, but it's pretty much the same deal with even newer ATVs and dirt bikes, uh, you usually troubleshoot around the CDI and save that for last. Now, with all that being said, um, Suzuki does have a guide uh, to check the CDI. Um, just going to show you that real quick. You want to screenshot that. 
Um, but basically, again, they keep going back to talking about the Suzuki Pocket Tester, and um, you really do have to have that to get accurate readings, unfortunately. But even here, again, talking about CDI, says when the continuity and the resistance values are as shown in the following table, it can be judged that the igniter unit is normal. And, and just by even their wording, um, it's not an exact science. But anyway, you would set your meter up on uh, K ohms again, and uh, you would read this chart just like you would the, uh, the rectifier chart. Um, for an example, you would take your green and you would follow it over, and you go to your blue, and where those two cross each other, that's the reading you're looking for, 2.8. So, um, just to show you another one, you can go across your black and white and your green, follow that down, and where they meet, again, three. Uh, if you went from your pink to your green, they're looking for 13, etc., etc. So anyway, uh, we're not really going to get proper readings with this, but um, I'll go through a couple of them just so we can watch the, uh, the needle move uh, to show us that we don't have any opens on it. And, uh, but uh, again, I, I'm going to kind of leave it there, I guess. Uh, again, I'll, I'll test a couple, but uh, definitely troubleshoot around your CDI. Save that for last. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have the proper meter, you might come close to some of these readings. And I would still bet even with that meter, you know, this is in a perfect world uh, when they design these and, you know, the engineers were uh, working in the lab. So anyway, we'll check a couple um, and we'll go from there. All right, so I'm just going to go through a couple of these. We'll go across the blue and the green. All right, you can see we got movement there. I'll try the black and white and the green. Same thing, we got movement there. Um, so basically that's it. I'm not going to go through them all because I, I know my CDI is good. I know my problems down with the, the stator. Um, so, but if you were troubleshooting your machine and basically, uh, you went through everything and everything was checking out good, um, I would definitely check, um, that entire chart that's in the book and at least see that you're getting movement, uh, on your needle with your analog meter. Uh, if you go across something that's in the chart and the needle's not moving, uh, chances are you got an open circuit there, uh, so that means something's going on with it. If you do get something where the needle don't move, just make sure you're getting a good connection. These uh, connections on here get kind of crusty after a while, so make sure you got your meter on there good. You don't want to go spending money on a CDI uh, for no good reason. So, yeah, that's pretty All right, so I did go ahead and uh, remove the stator. Um, just want to show you real quick before I end this video um, that indeed it was the stator. Uh, obviously, that was giving us our problem. You can see the copper windings are showing through there, and they just started wearing on there. Um, basically, what was happening, uh, this is one of the three bolts that holds in the magneto, and this one was uh, loose, and it was turned out almost a quarter of an inch. So that was sticking out, basically. And as this thing was spinning, it was rubbing against the, the stator. So that's our problem. Uh, I'm going to go through, tighten up the three bolts. Uh, actually, I'll take them out. I'll clean them up. Check the book. I'm pretty sure they're going to want um, some Loctite on there. Uh, even if they don't call for it, I'll probably put a little bit of medium Loctite on there. And uh, we'll torque them down to spec. And then I just got to figure out what I'm doing for a stator, and uh, hopefully we'll get this guy up and running. Um, I am going to make a second video on how to disassemble this and uh, reinstall it. So if you're interested in that, um, it's not out yet. Um, as you're seeing this video, it might be. Take a look, but if it's not, it'll be out soon.